this particular doe and her yearling came down towards me from the north and stayed out about 50 yards. I didn't have any shooting lanes uh, the direction that they are in. So a shooting opportunity was not an option for these guys unless they came on down through in front of the blind for me. They were running around north of me. Came from the east, there had been uh, uh, some shooting. Uh, this was when the uh, senior, junior, interless doe season was in. And they came running in from the east or been shooting out that way. Now this particular doe, she came in from the west, had been working in through. And watching her here, I thought she was coming straight towards the stump that's behind this closest tree. And that stump is about 25 yards from me in the blind. But instead, she just sort of fooled around, did some looking, did some licking, cleaned herself. Then decides to walk over this branch that had came down in a windstorm of a tree. Why she thought she had to walk right through it and not come around it or come towards me, I don't know. This young fawn from this year probably was kicked out by mom now wandering around on her own mom should have taught her a little bit more but she comes right up walks in front of the blind goes to the left side behind that tree then comes back and walks right up to the side of the blind and tries to decide who's in there or what's in there. Can I smell you? Can I see you? And my focus is a little off here. I'm sorry about that. But being she was six feet away from me, I wasn't taking any more chances of movement of trying to bring the focus in a little bit better, clearer. For And figured she would spook if I would try that. But she kept nosing and trying to smell and trying to get scent of whatever was going on. She just couldn't figure it out. And she proceeded to do some cleaning of her body also. And then she'd look, chew some acorns, do some smelling, keep looking, trying to figure out what is in that black. It was sort of comical being that she was only six feet away. But she was just this year's fawn and so I videoed, videoed her And left her play around. She'd go off to the right, eat. There she had a niche. It was her jaw or whatever. There she's chewing on her food. And again, now she comes up clo as close to the blind as she can get. Licking on the blind. And then trying to do the smell thing again. So we're very interesting with her just being there and watching what she's doing, trying to figure out what was in that opening. Now there's my sentinel decoy. This I had was a flock of uh, turkeys, and from what I could tell, they were all uh, hens. I didn't see any beards on anything. I'm not sure how big the flock was. Uh, some of them came down through here, 25 yards away. We have a squirrel out there at the stump. Here comes a turkey in, comes another one, a deer decoy. 
other ones were north and also other ones south. Some of them went out around further around and came in below me and they all ended up gathering around the back of me in a, uh, some pines. But I, behind the blind there's about three trees that have blown over in the past few years. And uh, so that keeps my backside sort of protected. And there comes another one down through, hiding behind the trees. They came down so far, didn't come as far as the first two. And then they start turned and started back up through. And this was the week before uh, PA's fall uh, turkey season opened. And they just fed around, did a lot of scratching, and they ended up working their way back out uh, east. They came from the west and uh, had gone south earlier in the morning and then came back up and got up on top and then disappeared. And then uh, all of a sudden they were coming down the road towards me. So that makes it interesting of how they can disappear on you and then all of a sudden show up.